It's Thanksgiving Eve, and we are still doing election results because moments ago, the Alaska Division of Elections finished tabulating the votes from earlier this month, and we now have two breaking new election calls. NBC News just projected that Republican Senator Lisa, there's the music, Republican Senator Lisa Murkowski has won re-election, and Democrat Mary Peltola is the winner of the at-large congressional seat. Now, Congresswoman Peltola, the first indigenous Alaskan to serve in Congress, defeated former governor and Republican vice presidential nominee Sarah Palin with nearly 55 percent of the vote. That's a live stream, I imagine, of the uh, ranked choice voting that they beam out to the world as they tabulate there the last the division elections. Now, this has been another not so great run up to Thanksgiving for Palin. 14 years after her infamous turkey pardoning gaffe, if you have a weak stomach, you may want to look away. Oh, well, this was this was neat. I, I was uh, happy to get to be invited to participate in this. And, and uh, you know, it, it, for one, you need a little bit of levity in this job, especially with uh, uh, so much that has gone on in the last couple of months that has been so um, political, obviously, that it's nice to get out and, and, and do something to promote a local business and, and to uh, just participate in something that isn't so uh, heavy-handed politics that uh, invites criticism. Certainly, we'll probably invite criticism for even doing this, too, but at least this was fun. Now, on a serious note, this is all happening now, two weeks after the election, because Alaska's got this new voting system. Alaska voters now rank up to four candidates in each race instead of choosing only one. If no candidate receives 50% plus one of the vote, as was the case in Alaska's at-large congressional district, the division of elections move on, moves on to count the voters' second choices. The candidate who gets the least number of first choice votes is eliminated. Then, tabulation starts in rounds. If your first choice was not eliminated, your vote stays with them and gets counted in the next round. If your first choice was eliminated, your second choice is now counted. This keeps happening in rounds until two candidates are left and the one with the most votes wins. Bunch of places use this. Maine uses it. New York City actually used it uh, for its primary here. Uh, tonight, that is what happened for Democratic Congresswoman Mary Peltola, who will serve in this next Congress in the seat formerly held by Don Young. For more on this momentous night of ranked choice drama, I'm joined by Michelle Goldberg, opinion columnist for The New York Times. It is an amazing trajectory for Sarah Palin. You and I are sort of in the same age cohort, right? We both, we both covered that race in 2008. Uh, and she was like a shooting star that lit up the night sky when she, I mean, it was just, a, she was a, a sensation, a star and an attentional sensation. Everyone was thinking about her, talking about her, SNL, she was everywhere and, every, and everyone had their eyes on her. Right. And she set the stage for Donald Trump, or at least totally. in many ways was the model for Donald Trump. And the fact that she's been sort of losing her um, shine for years now is one reason why I'm a little bit skeptical of people who believe that Donald Trump's um, hold on the Republican Party is eternal, right? I mean, I certainly think that we shouldn't assume that he's just going to go away, but, but this shtick does get old. Um, you know, people do lose their novelty and their allure and and things things are just always changing. Um, and the other thing I think is interesting about Sarah Palin is she could have had such a different career. I mean, as you said, when she was chosen, there was, you know, Democrats were terrified. She seemed electric. The media was kind of in love with her until those very embarrassing interviews. And had she sort of pursued the path that she had pursued somewhat as governor. I mean, she was very right wing, but she mm -hmm. wasn't as much of a kind of full time provocateur when she was governor of Alaska. She could have had a huge career on the national stage, right? I mean, the path that she went on was a choice. Yeah, she could have probably had a good shot at being the nominee, but she stopped being the governor. She decided to be a kind of like a full time sort of what right wing celebrity. Um, mm. I think a little earlier, earlier than that was a plausible path to presidency, which, again, the proof of concept that Donald Trump ends up proving. But she was very much, you know, this kind of troll politics. I'll never forget being in that room at the RNC in 2008 in the Twin Cities when she was giving her speech. And at one point, she turned to talk about the I don't she didn't call it the fake news, but the right. media, the you know, and everyone, the place went nuts and they everyone started pointing and cursing and giving the middle finger and braying up at the, you know, the camera booths. And it was it was very much Trump before Trump. And I remember it being in that moment like, ooh, something 
something real dark and unsettling is being unleashed in front of me right now. Right. And and then we've seen the consequences over the last few years of, you know, as the, of that being unleashed and kind of growing and growing and growing until it nearly brought the country to its knees. You know, but I do think it's interesting that the people who know her the most, right, the people who've watched her Incredible. ascent up close, a very, I mean, you know, and 55, 45 is not a normal margin in a kind of swing congressional race, right? Like, you don't see people in swing districts winning by 10 percent. By the way, it was lamestream media, thank you, Brendan, really <laughs> getting in my ear, who has the scars to, uh, for, for all the valent coverage he's done in his life. Uh, the lamestream media. But it, yes, that's a great point. And I remember when she said, when Don Young died uh, in office, and there was going to be a special election, there was a whole bunch of candidates. And when she declared, I was like, oh, we're going to have we're just going to have Sarah Palin as a political thing. Like, I just, in my head, I was like, I think she'll probably win. She yeah. won statewide. And we're just going to now have Sarah Palin. And it's Sarah a Republican. Palin. It's a Republican and we're going to have Sarah Palin. And maybe we'll have now, is this like the Sarah Palin 2.0? She can be member of Congress. Who knows what else? And for in two consecutive elections, for Alaskans to be like, no, we don't want the shtick. We want the 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 woman who's like really focused on like our fisheries and like <laughs> and like our our healthy fish population and someone who's like the opposite of Sarah Palin and seems very liked and respected on all sides is not a polarizing character is really like a complete different way of doing politics than her well i also think that you know ranks choice voting is kind of depolarizing. Yeah, right? that's, a good it's point. That was, that's the idea behind it. I mean, right, it's depolarizing both because it means that sort of the most pivotal thing isn't who wins the primary, you know, so you don't kind of outsource these decisions entirely to the rabid base in primary elections. But it's also depolarizing because it gives you an incentive to try to win over the entire electorate as opposed to just turning out your base. Because even the people who might not vote for you in the first round could get you, you in the second. Right. Right. And so, right, exactly. And so the idea of, right, the, the, the political logic which propelled Donald Trump in that primary in 2016, which was, I've got this incredible hold on 30 percent of the population. Everyone came, came around, but I can hold this plurality. And it's the same thing he has right now, larger than 30 percent is the opposite math of like, can I be broadly appealing to a whole bunch of people? <laughs> Which again, used to be one of the key recipes of politics that has been kind of lost, but I think resurrected a little bit in these midterms. Right. I mean, and part of, I mean, part of ranked choice voting is part of the story here. And then part of the broader story, I think, is a rejection of Sarah Palin style politics, Trumpist politics, obviously, and the loss of all of these stop the steal candidates. And I think, you know, and I also don't think you can um, underestimate the impact of abortion and the Dobbs decision in this race. You know, I think, you know, she she ran, Mary Patola ran as the pro-choice, pro-fisheries candidate. Right. Yeah, she was pro-choice and she was pro-fish. We've had her on the program. She's one of the most fascinating members of Congress, uh, I think, of the entire country. And, and she now is, has been re-elected in a short, a short span. She will be representing the state of Alaska in their at-large seat held for decades by Don Young. <laughs>